How's everybody doing? Welcome to Sit Down News. So today I'm going to be talking about something that has to do with loan sharking money. But before I begin, let me give a quick shout out to Ratchet, our sponsor for the show. Ratchet, is, Ratchet Clothing is a company out of the United Kingdom. They sponsor the show. They have been putting a lot of stuff out now for Christmas, and you still have time to order if you want to order from them. I'm going to put a link down below and you can check out their website. So today I'm going to be speaking about this loan shark money that I lent to the Gambino. Specifically, this has to do again with Sal Lombardo. I just spoke about him in, in the last episode or two. <clears throat> so just to give you a little background, Sal at the time was an associate to Pete, tall Pete in Zerillo. And many of you probably know who I'm talking about. Pete, is a friend with the Gambinos. So I met Sal over a beef and a sit down and that had to do with a pizzeria. And that's a whole nother incident. I could get to that. But about a week after I met, I met Sal, I get a telephone call from him. He asked me if he could meet, if I could meet with him. I didn't know what he wanted. So I went and met him in Queens. And he basically told me that he was looking to make some money and that he knew people that wanted money. And one guy in particular needed some money and would I be willing to give the money? So I said, how much money are we talking about? 12,000. You know, you know, the guy, yeah. I said, all right. I said, you know what, Sal, let me get back to you tomorrow and I'll meet up with you. The next day I took an envelope with 12,000. I went and met with Sal. I handed it to him and I explained to him a, what I wanted, I wanted him to make some money on it, but more importantly, that he was responsible. And, oh, you're kidding me? He says, you know, okay, I just want to make sure, you know, I'm handing you this money, you're responsible for this money. I also wanted Sal to have a conversation with Pete and run it by Pete, because technically I shouldn't be giving Sal the money, he should be talking to the guy he's with. He told me, no, don't worry, Pete, Pete, don't, Pete don't care. I said, all right, Sal, I, I want you to go immediately and go talk to Pete, tell him that I gave you this money. So we were squared away with that. And I told him that the following Friday and every Friday thereafter is when he would meet me, we would meet up and he would give me the, the VIG, which is the interest on the, on the money. A couple of days later go by, he gets in touch with me again. He tells me he wants to see me. I go meet with him again. What's up, Sal? I got another guy. <laughs> I said, you got another guy? How much does this guy want? 15. I said, all right, Sal, give me a couple of days and let me get back to you. I leave. A couple of days later, I go back. I got an envelope of 15,000. I give him the same spiel, you know, this is what I want. You put on top of it, whatever you want. And same thing. Did you talk to Pete? No, I'm going to talk to him. Make sure you talk to Pete and now tell him about this too. And Sal, I don't have to repeat myself. You know, I know I'm responsible. Okay. That's all I want to know. So now Friday's come. I put both payments together and I told him, Sal, on Friday, this is what you have to have for me on Friday. Friday comes around and I go meet with Sal in a cafe in Ridgewood off of Myrtle Avenue somewhere. And he right away, I could tell he's going to give me a song and a dance, a dance. And it's, and it's a bad sign because this is payment number one. I, I got to get the money together. I didn't see the guys. I didn't have time and all that. So I said to him, I said, you know, Sal, let me ask you something, Sal. Did you speak to Pete? No, I'm going to go speak to Pete. Now, right away, I know what I'm going to do in my mind. Sal, this looks bad. You know, we can't have this go on now to next week. You need, you need to come up with this money. And you never should have took it if this is what we're going to go to. I wouldn't have gave it to you. I'm not going to deal with this. No, no, no. I'm going to, I'm going to get it. Okay. I leave there and I drive right to... Uh, Bensonhurst, 18th Avenue. I go to the cafe that they stay in. I go looking for Pete. 
Pete's not there. I leave a message for Pete to get in touch with me. Later that day, Pete gets in touch with me. We can't meet, but we meet the next day and we meet at New Park Pizza in Howard Beach. I tell Pete, Pete, <laughs> I don't know if this guy Sal told you, but Sal borrowed money from you. Oh my God, how much money, he says. I said he borrowed <clears throat> 12 and then he borrowed 15. So he's shaking his head. He says, listen, if I had the, you know, if it was 10, we'd give it to you. I said, look, I just want you to know, Pete, that I told him to speak to you first. And I noticed that when I spoke to him the second time, he still didn't speak to you. You know, he could have made it his business to come here like I, like I went to go look for you. He said, look, don't worry about it. You're going to get the money. We're responsible for the money. So now Pete locks himself and the Gambinos into this money by saying, by making that statement, he's locked in. So I don't, I'm not concerned about Sal no more because of Pete's statement, because now anytime there's a problem, I get Pete involved and that they're, they're responsible for the money. What happens is, is that I go to following Friday to go meet Sal to get the money. It's a torrential rainstorm. And the area where the cafe was in, in this Ridgewood, you, there was no parking spots. I couldn't find parking anywhere. So I had to park about three blocks away, <laughs> jump out of the car. By the time I run to the cafe, they had to buzz you in. <clears throat> He's laughing. He's sitting there laughing. I'm soaking wet head to toe. Why didn't you call? I would have got you. <clears throat> I said, Sal, it doesn't matter. Have, a, have an espresso. Okay. And by this time, Pete got in touch with Sal and he told, he knew I spoke to Pete. He had the money from the week prior and the money that for that week, he had it together. So we talked a little bit and this and that. So now it's time to leave. So we're both leaving. Like I said, it's raining like, <laughs> like a bastard. So he says, let me drive you to your car. I got my car parked right on the side over here. I said, all right. Now, Sal at the time had an older, one of those older sport caddies. And um, it was black. I don't I'll forget, it's pouring rain out. And I jump into this black car. I don't, I'm not looking. And we start driving. I smell, smell like a new car. I said, Sal, what, what'd you get this car? Detailed? He says, no. So it's new. I said, you're kidding me. I said, I didn't even wreck it. You know, it looks like your other car, you know, black. He says, yeah, I know. I says, what did you do with the other car? He says, oh, I traded it in. And plus I gave the guy 12,000. I said, oh, nice. Good luck with the car. Gets me to my car. I get out of the car in the rain. <laughs> Again, I drive straight to Brooklyn to 18th Avenue. Again, Pete's not there. I leave another message. I don't remember when Pete gets back to me, whether it was that night or the next day. We meet again in New Park Pizza. I says to him, Pete, I'm sorry to keep doing this to you, but I got to tell you a story. Does Sal think that we're stupid? That is a guy trying to make money. I know the guy don't got money. He's trying to make money. I tried to help him. The first thing he asked me for was 12,000. Then he comes back and asks me for 15, which I told you about. And I tell Pete the whole story about the car. He puts his hands in his head, shaking his head. What am I going to do with this guy? He says, he says, listen to me. I'm going to talk to him. Don't worry. I told you the last time. Don't worry about it. You're going to get your money. And to be honest with you, all he had to do was tell me that it was for him. I might not have even charged that much vig on it. But of course, he said it was for somebody else. So now we know where the first 12,000 went. I had a lot of issues with Sal with this money. You know, there were so many issues. It was so many times he was short, and didn't have it and all of that. But he always eventually came up with it. Sometimes he had to double up the next, you know, two, week, uh, two weeks. He would give me two weeks later. 
it was it was a mess. It was it was a it was a a headache that I really didn't want. But at one point, Sal goes, and this fifteen thousand legitimately went to this guy Carlo, and Carlo was an associate to the Bananos. So, unbeknown to me, <laughs> which which I found to be I, I was unbelievable when I found when I found this out from Carlo himself was that the interest for the 12 Sal put into the 15 and these guys were like in the bakery business and he's got this guy Carlo paying for both loans <laughs> you know and in that business you, you really don't care where who's paying your money you want your money you know, you want your money every Friday. Morally, when I found out, I felt so bad for this guy, Carlo. And I'll get into that in a minute. So the 12000 gets paid off. And that's a, another story. But Sal won't have to give me anything on the 12000 I get that 12000 back. And so now there's the lingering 15000 that I got to get paid for. Now, Sal wants to get away from having to meet me. He wants me to meet with Carlo. I really should, should have held him to it. But Carlo was in Long Island and, and I was, and it was easier for us to meet. I said, okay, no problem, Sal, I'll meet the guy. I meet Carlo. And it wasn't until after a while when he showed me a book where he kept all these uh, payments in there of the amount that he, I said, wait a minute, why, why do you have this amount? He says, well, that's what I've been paying. I says, you're kidding me. So Sal got Carlo to pay for both loans. I don't know why he would even accept that kind of uh, vig on, on 15,000, but he did. So Carlo is paying, 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 paying. Uh, maybe one or two times he missed and then had to catch up. Not too bad. But then he goes dark on me, right? And he goes to a captain in our family named uh, Paolo, but they call him Paul, Laduca. So Paul tries to get involved, calls me one day to a meeting and tells me that you know, this guy, Carlo, he's like this, you know, he speaks with an accent. I said, yeah, we all are. <laughs> and, you know, you know, you got to do me a favor with this guy and this, that, you know, thing. So I had did my homework first before I went to this meeting. And I found out that that's how I find out that Carlo is an associate to the Bananos, not an associate to, uh, at the time, Abba got it, because Paul's with us. So I said it. Hey, Paul, I got a question for you. Carlos, with you? I already know the answer. No. He says, you know, I know, I know uh, his father and the uncle. We, we will wait together on the other side. I said, no disrespect to you, but why, why, why are you here? Why am I here talking to you if, you, if Carlos is not with you? Well, no, he's, he's, you know, he's my friend. I said, okay. Now, now this guy is a multi trillionaire <laughs> that I'm talking to, multi-millionaire. So I said, Paul, look, you said he's like this and I'm like this too. I gave somebody my money and I know you'll understand this. I want my money back. And he, he needs to pay me until he gives me my money back. That's, that's the name of the business. You know that. So I said, but what I, what I could tell you is, is that since he's your friend and you want to help him, why don't you give me my money and then you could give Carlo the break. And let me tell you that this guy probably had the money in his pocket. That's how much money he had. And he gave me a song and dance that it was a bad time right now. We were close to Christmas, maybe in January, we got to see. I said, okay. And he didn't like it. He's, he was red in the face. He didn't like that. I gave him that answer. He thought that I was just going to say, all right, uh, you know, I'll give him a pass or whatever, but he, he was mistaken. So now I have to bring this back to Sal because now Carlo is nowhere to be found. He has to pay me. 
And now Carlo is running to people to try to get involved. So now I'm going to put it back in Sal's lap. So I go meet up with Sal and I said to him, hey, Sal, this what's going on? And, you know, you need to, I'm, you're going to have to start seeing me again every Friday. No, he says, you know, that's, this just has to do with Carlo. I says, no, he says, you're going to have to go talk to the, to the bananas. <laughs> I said, Sal, your mistake, you're going to have to go talk to the bananas because I want to let you know something. You remember that day? that I met you those two days and I handed you the money. Do you, do you want me to remind you? I know. I says, well, then why are we having this conversation? You're responsible for this money, Sal. I don't got to talk to nobody. I got to talk. I'm talking to the guy I got to talk to. I don't got to talk to nobody. So I says, and Sal, if you want to take this a step further, we can. Because now at the time, by the way, at the time, Sal now becomes a friend, means he's now a member with the, with the uh, Gambino. So now I don't have to go to Pete no more. I could just talk to Sal. He could deal with me. He's, so I says, if you want, now Sal was with Joe Gambino. That was his capital regime. If you want, we'll bring this to Joe and we could take this to another level. Oh, you could go talk to Joe. I says, well, if that's where we're going to go, then we're gonna, that's where we're going to go. But I can guarantee you one thing, I'm going to get my money, Sal. So I think it's better if we do it between me and you. To make a long story short, we did have to go through Joe. I did get my money. And Sal, I guess, had to pay off Joe because Joe, Joe paid the money to us and I got my money. And that was the end of that. And that's the end of the story. Just another quick one on the treachery and the games that go on in that life. I hope you've enjoyed the story. I hope you all have a rest of the day, that it's a good day for all of you. I got things to do myself. I'm going to go for now. Ciao for now.